Vancouver has a ton of population growth every year. If you bought a home here five years ago for a million bucks, you would have made two or three hundred thousand dollars just for sitting on it. Supply and demand, baby. I thought to myself, I could buy a Ferrari with that kind of money. Maybe it's time to get into the market. I've been here for a while. I love this apartment. That's why I'm still here. But it would be nice if I could put some of my rent payments towards my own mortgage instead of my landlord's mortgage, you know? Ideally, we find a place just like this one. It's gotta be two bed, two bath. It's gotta be bright, big windows just like this one. I mean, you can see how much light is coming in and it can't be in an old building. The older the building, the higher the maintenance fees. And old buildings have things like popcorn ceilings, which nobody, nobody likes. And it has to be pet friendly because I may be adding a doggy to the family. We'll see, stay tuned. And that is why today we're touring three apartments in Vancouver around the $1 million price range to see what's really out there. Will we find my new home? Will, I mean, will we find your new home? I don't, I don't know, anything's possible, but will we find some deals? That's what we're gonna find out. I'm also a real estate agent here in Vancouver, so we will put my property expertise to the test. You can also contact me here if you're interested in real estate in Vancouver. The first property we're looking at today is the lowest price and we will go up from there starting at 699,000. It's a one bed, one bath located right downtown in the neighborhood of Yale town. And thank you to Leo Wilk and his team for letting us tour their listings today. His information and the listings will be linked below. Let's do some tours. First apartment we're looking at, I'm excited to start this video, this journey, but this is the place, it's a one bed, one bath. It's around 559 square feet. I'll pause and I'll say the reason I'm looking at this one is because it has a very interesting layout for a one bed, one bath. And it's not a ton of square feet, but they use it really well. So I'll take a step back and I'll show you what I mean. Inside the door, got the kitchen, large, farm sink and right in front of us is the living area. And you'll see what I'm talking about with the layout is that past us there, a lot of like one bed apartments are just big rectangles. And I thought this one was interesting because over here you have a solarium. In here, you've got views of the city. Like, can you imagine this as an office? Desk right there. Something that was on my list was the lighting. It had to be good lighting. Solariums always have good lighting. Homer Street and Smythe Street. People who are from Vancouver know where I am right now. Let's check out the bedroom. One bed, so this is the one bedroom. The primary bedroom. As as I mentioned, we are in Yale Town. And Yale Town's really lively. It's one of the most lively neighborhoods in all of Vancouver, I would say. Nightlife, restaurants, all that kind of stuff. But when, if you're high enough, you get to enjoy the nice things about the area, like being a close walk to everywhere. And you get to avoid most of the, the bad things, like the noise. If you were down, like, on the ground floor. And the bathroom, nice finishes. And then I saw on the layout that there's this space on the other side of the kitchen here, which you wouldn't expect it to be here, but this could be like another den. Like it literally could be, or it could be a large pantry if you if you cook a lot. I mean, it's, it is massive. But overall, I think this is a good, it's a good option for a one bedroom place because a lot of one bedrooms, like I said, they're just not designed like this. They're not as functional, but let's see how the others compare. Price per square foot is one of the most important numbers in real estate because it tells you exactly that, how much you're paying for one square foot in a property. So if you know the average price per square foot in a neighborhood, then when you see a property and you hear it's price per square foot, you can be like, oh, that's higher than average or it's lower than average. So you'd know if it's a good deal or not. So for a place that's 699,000, current variable interest rates are around 5%. And let's say we go with a 20% down payment on all of these homes. That would make our monthly payment around $3,430. We'll look at the monthly payment for each property because like I want to know but I'll just I'll just share it also before we do our second and third property something to keep in mind when searching for homes online is that you do it securely I mean when you're potentially spending millions of dollars on this you don't want your information or search criteria getting hijacked you don't which is where our sponsor Guardio comes in Guardio is a simple few click to install browser extension that keeps us from viruses phishing attempts malware and other internet threats for example one of their best features is the free security scan that you can run once you install it and it lets you know if you've got anything suspicious on your computer already, it will probably surprise you. And it tells you what to do next, like how to deal with it. Guardio keeps tabs on all the websites you visit, so it knows if any of your information is at risk. And if it is, it notifies you right away. They can even send real-time alerts to your phone. I honestly get like hundreds of emails a day, and although that might sound like some type of humble brag, it is not. 
it's a lot of emails to go through and only one wrong click could risk my information. But with Guardio, I know they have me covered. Even if I click a malicious email, I know Guardio will block it right away. In the end, Guardio blocks more than 100 times more harmful websites than its competitors. You only need one account for five family members and there's over a million people already using the extension. So if you are looking to stay protected on your search, use my link below to get 20% off their services and also a one week free trial to see if you like it. With that said, onto the second property. Truth is some people need more space. You know, maybe you have a significant other that you live with or a kid, you know, family. I don't have, I don't have any of those. Okay, th that's not the point, that's not the point. But I do love having a separate room for like an office, even if it's not used as a bedroom. So our second listing is a two bed, two bath, takes us a little bit south into the Killerney area and it's listed at 824,800. Not the most beautiful day, as you can see, but we're doing it anyways. Nice area. So inside the second apartment that we're touring, this one is just over a thousand square feet. I think it's around a thousand sixty square feet. And the first thing I noticed about this place in the photos was that it's separate, like the living room is separated from the dining area. So you have, you know, space for like both rooms. And this is actually the closest comparable to my current apartment, which I really like. It's similar on the technical side of things, but when you're inside, this one definitely shows mine up by a lot. For example, Bosch appliances, quartz countertop, mine is like a cheap, you know, when you tap on it, it sounds like plastic. That's what mine is. It's also a corner unit, big windows off the living room. I think it also corner off the bedroom, which is interesting. Let's like take a look. Bathroom, first bedroom, closet behind me. Good size, you could put a queen in here if you wanted to. My favorite thing about this place, I don't know if it's the current owners that did this or when the building was built, but the bedrooms are carpeted and everywhere else is a nice flooring but there's two places the carpets go, and that is bedrooms and basements. And then into the primary bedroom, yeah, this, I was right, another corner. This is a corner unit, obviously. This room is actually huge. Like this kind of primary bedroom, downtown, you're just not gonna get. Like this is just so much larger. Perfect lighting. This, this is what I was talking about. That was on my list for good lighting because this looks good on camera. I mean, look. And also, I do have a lot of clothes for real estate stuff, you know, suits and all that. So there's a big walk-in closet. And then the second ensuite, well, the first ensuite, second bathroom. Accent lighting under there, that's nice. It's making it tough. This is making it tough. This is a nice one. After quick calculations, our monthly payment would be $4,050 around that. So about $600 more than property number one, which is a decent amount, but it's a lot more space and it is a di very different property. Since a lot of people work downtown, you know, there's a lot of office buildings there. That's what creates the demand and why you pay a premium for living downtown because people have to go there all the time. And commuting is essentially just time wasted a little bit. And my real estate office is downtown. So every time I go there right now, I do have to drive. If I could walk there, I wouldn't have to pay for parking. It wouldn't take time, no traffic. So back to Yale Town for the third apartment, another two bed, two bath listed at 1,070,000. If you didn't know, Yale Town got its name because we used to have a bunch of railways running through downtown Vancouver. And the place the trains and railways were actually based out of was from a place called Yale in the Fraser Canyon. Then when they relocated most of their stuff to right in Vancouver, they just, they just took the name and now it's Yale town. It's not an exciting story, I, I realize that, but it is true. Just inside the front door, this is property three. I am excited for this one. I know in here, this is just a storage closet in the entryway. I think this is the first bath. Yes, it is. And this is the one listed at 1,070,000. It is tenanted right now and I can tell because they, they are using the storage room well. And then right in front of me here, we have one of their two bedrooms and just to the side is actually the living room, the main area. So we'll go in here first. Decent sized room. You could fit a queen bed in here, but you probably wouldn't put like a desk and a queen bed is what it looks like. But it's like extremely bright in here. And that's mainly like, if you look at the windows, the buildings that are right beside us, are actually really low and there's a, obviously a street in between us, but just being this high up in the air, it gives you a lot more light because there's no buildings right beside you. So checking out the main living area, this is where you're gonna spend most of your time, most of my time. So also I know there's in unit washer and dryer. That's a must. I need to add that to my list of musts, but I mean, we're on the 23rd floor and we're a corner unit. So I know this is gonna be super bright. Giant farm sink. Looks like all stainless steel appliances too. They've got bar seating built in. Oh, and a wine rack. I don't drink wine, 
but I could put some beer over there. We've got a deck also and a city view. Oh, you can see BC Place actually. Look at that. Looks like they have like a mini barbecue set up right here. And this reminds me, this building, the amenities, it has like a concierge, a gym, and it also has a doggy deck. So like pets are allowed, that was on my list, but also a deck for dogs on the eighth floor, something like that. So that's a win in my book. So let's check, check out the main bedroom. This one has an ensuite off of it as well. Good size. This looks like a queen bed in here. Ensuite over there, walk-in closet. If you've ever had a roommate or shared an apartment or house with friends, then you know that you don't want your room like on the other side of another room. Like this wall, if your room was on the other side, you know, you just start to hear stuff that you shouldn't be hearing through the walls. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna leave it at that. There's a lot of ups to this one. I do wish maybe there, if there was a little more space in here, we could have had the dining room separated from the living room. But again, when you have one or two people living in an apartment, like bar stools are the way to go because you just save all this space here that you can do whatever with. So good place. Property number three, financial breakdown, our most expensive property, the two bed, two bath, up in the sky, super bright. List price, 1,070,000. Our monthly payment would be around $5,250 a month. Truth is, I liked all the properties we saw. Like, I'm glad we actually went and saw all of them. For my needs personally, just being downtown, having enough space, having an office room or a bedroom and a doggy deck, say less. In all seriousness though, it's close to the final two apartments for me. I did wanna see a one bedroom, especially one with a den. This is just the start of my home search. I'm glad we saw these properties and by the time I decide, they may be gone, I, I don't know. But sometimes you need to see a few places in person to understand what you actually like and put value in. And so if you made it this far in the video, I really wanna know which property you would choose. Number one, number two, or number three. And turn notifications on if you wanna see episode two because it is in the process right now because we're gonna find a home. Thank you again to Leo Wilk for letting us tour his listings, his information, and the listings will be linked below. I'll see you next week.